Welcome in to the Punt and Pass Podcast. I'm your host, Drew Butler, joined alongside by my co-host, Aaron Murray. Be sure to follow us on social media, at Punt and Pass on Twitter and Instagram. I am at Drew Butler. Aaron is at Aaron Murray 11 Head on over to puntandpass.com, the number one destination for all things college football. This is the college football playoff preview show. Big episode coming up. We're diving into the Orange Bowl, the Cotton Bowl. We'll touch on the New Year's Six games as well. It is Thursday morning. Aaron and I are in the fold. He's getting ready to head down to Miami. So we got an action-packed pod ready to roll. This episode of Punt and Pass is presented by our awesome partners over at Prize Picks. Download the Prize Picks app. Go to prizepicks.com. Use the promo code PUNT. You get a 100% deposit match up to your first $100. The board is stacked right now. College football, bowl games up and down, NBA, NHL, college basketball, NFL this weekend, two two weeks left in the regular season before the playoffs start. You can do cross-board entries. You can 10x your entry. Prize picks is simply the best. Again, promo code PUNT, 100% deposit match up to your first $100. Download the Prize Picks app. Aaron, you're heading to Miami later on. You are going to the Orange Bowl. It is dreary, warm, and wet in Atlanta. You will be down in the sunshine in South Beach getting ready. And, you know, I, I just want to start here. I'm seeing a lot of talking points that the fan base of Georgia is not as excited for the Orange Bowl as maybe they were for the Rose Bowl when it was the semifinal game back in 2017 going into 2018. I kind of disagree. I, I just think there's a lot going on right now. I mean, tomorrow, it's, it's ready to roll, man. You're playing Michigan, number two team in the nation, for a spot to go to the Natty. Yeah, they act like Georgia's won like five national. They act like Georgia's <laughs> Alabama. And yeah. I know Georgia wants to be Alabama, and maybe we think we are Alabama, but we're not Alabama, and we're not yet. I mean, I, I said it what, about a month and a half ago. I think Georgia has the chance to go on an a Alabama type, type run, run here yeah. the next 10 years. But until Georgia wins a national championship, these fans are going to be excited to go to every single playoff yeah. game, every single championship game. Plus, the weather here is just shit. So I know. It's awful. Let's go to Miami, and, and let's go have some fun. Uh, get outside, 80 degrees, nice and sunny. So, no, I, I think I've seen a lot of my buddies already down there, some of our friends. I've been hit up. I mean, I had like four or five buddies call me last night like, hey, are you in Miami? Let's go get dinner. I'm like, no, man. You're just that popular, huh? People just want to be with you. (laughs) Because I'm supposed to be playing golf right now uh, down in Miami. So, you know, I I think it's going to be a great showing for both fan bases. Is Michigan maybe a little bit more pumped? I'm sure. Probably. Yeah. But it also is, I think, snowing in Michigan. So I would be a lot more excited to get out of Michigan and go to Miami, too, if I was a fan. Yeah, no question. I mean, I totally agree with you. What are your thoughts on the semifinal games being on New Year's Eve? Um, I don't like it. And from what I understand, it's because the Rose Bowl committee would not flinch. The college football playoff committee went to the Rose Bowl and said, hey, guys, we like these New Year's Day semifinal games to take place. Would the Rose Bowl be interested in maybe a New Year's Eve or a January 2nd slot? And the Rose Bowl said, no, absolutely not. We're not changing. So the two semifinal games are now on New Year's Eve. I mean, the Georgia kick probably going to be around 8 p.m. Look, I'm 32. I got kids. I don't have many New Year's Eve plans. But it seems like the lead up to the game is maybe drowned out by some other activities that are going on. I I would just prefer the games to be on New Year's Day. Oh, a hundred percent. I'd rather, I'd rather wake up hungover, get on my couch and watch football. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, I mean, that, that, that's the great thing about, uh, those, those new year's day football games, but I mean, you can look at it too. I mean, Friday night after the dogs win, giddy up, giddy up Miami yeah. new year's night. I mean, it was so fun. I was, I was talking with, um, for, for our, our deal in the, uh, the NFT space. I was talking with some fraternity guys about, Obviously, introduct, introducing NFTs. Yeah, you know how can we get this playerslounge.io at the, player, at the yep. players lounge on social media. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I was talking with them like, hey, Aaron, uh, we have a table at live on Thursday and Friday night. Do you want to come hang live, out? Live, live, not live. See, I don't come know on, to, I don't come know on, dude. I was like, I am the wrong person to ask. Like, Sharon and Maddox are going to be in Atlanta. I'm going to take every opportunity I can to sleep and relax. Like, I am not going to be at live. <laughs> on Thursday, Friday night. I can't believe you just called it live. That's yeah, hilarious. It's, it's <laughs> I will not be going. You should go. Now you need to go. You should live tweet it. 
I'd at be, live. I'd pass out in two seconds if I was at a club. That's so funny. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be rocking, and it'll be interesting to see what the attitude of the Georgia fan base will be. We'll get into the game here in a little bit. Duke's Mayo Bowl kicks off today, North Carolina versus South Carolina. Look, I love bowl season, okay? Watched all the games yesterday. We'll watch all the games today. Tomorrow, I'll be cooking up food. I always do a pork butt, collard mm. greens, black-eyed peas, Guinness for good luck on New Year's Day. So we'll get that dialed in. But our buddy Danny Cannell, and you and I work with Danny for Bet Online All Access. We were with him earlier this week on Tuesday morning. We previewed the games that we're going to discuss today. He sends out a tweet yesterday and says, if anything, if we've learned anything this offseason, it's that there's too many bowl games. He's he's calling for less bowl games. And and I tweeted at him, I go, Danny, who hurt you, man? Like, where could you come up with the idea that there are too many bowl games? Why would you want less college football, especially when you're in the media covering college football? I know. We I, need the games. I would think that Danny is just tweeting this out to get a reaction, which he most certainly got. You and I enjoy working with Danny. We'll call him out as well, which is always fun. But what are your thoughts on that tweet? I was like, dude, what? I love all these bowl games. You can get action on. You can go to prize picks. You can watch them and take away. I mean, I don't even know what day it is. The week between no Christmas and New Year's. It is like lost time. I got no idea what's going on. As long as there's football on, I'm interested. I'm watching. I would like more bowl games. Yeah, listen, if you don't want to watch them, then don't watch them. Like, if you think <laughs> yeah. there's too many, no one's forcing you to watch all 40 bowl games. So uh, you know what I'm interested in? Because every time I feel like Danny tweets something like this, the first person – I mean you, you, you jab at him, but it's more like lighthearted. Yeah. Do you think the the – I don't know if it's a rivalry or a hatred between him and McElroy is real because oh, every time he says yeah. something, McElroy always comes in like super hot. Like I don't know if it's like they're like best buddies and he's joking with them or like they seriously hate each other because it seems like he's – You mean, know his, what? His takes yeah. on Danny's comments are like, wow. Like dude, like do we need to get some boxing gloves and let you guys duel it out a little bit? Ah, that is interesting you know, because I think it, it's probably notable that when Danny left ESPN a couple of years ago, Greg was continuing to climb the ladder. Um, shocking to me because I thought Danny Cannell and Ryan Rosillo's radio show was like peak ESPN radio. So good to listen to. Those guys were awesome together. Um, I think Danny and Ryan still do some stuff on Ryan's podcast together. They're great. I mean, Danny was with SVP too, like – he was Danny still really does the morning good. show. Well, he's it's, at uh, CBS and, and Sirius XM now. Yeah. Oh, we, what, what are you talking about? Like on TV? He was on TV, Danny? Yeah. No, he was on radio back in ESPN Radio Heyday, like Colin Coward. Oh, uh, okay. Gotcha. Uh, but I'm going back to the tweet right now, okay? Because Danny said, if this year has taught us anything, it's this. 42 bowl games is too many. It's not even a debate at this point. Look, he gets tons of replies. It's great. And he just follows it up with a less is more. And McElroy quote tweets him, Greg McElroy, and says, When I worked with Danny on SiriusXM, I genuinely thought he enjoyed college football. I was wrong. Save the, quote, participation trophy argument. It's for the players and those that watch. You're not, all caps, forced to watch Give me football every single day, all caps. I wish we had 65 balls for every single FBS team. That is what Greg McElroy said. Danny Cannell says, what about another regular season game? Bulls are supposed to be special. They are not. Have a pulse of the players, not the company you work for. Yeah, so, I mean, they're going at it. Dude, but I swear it's every time Danny says something, Greg, like you can go back to a bunch of tweets that, you know, Danny said that is, you know, wants to get some kind of attention. And Greg always comes at him like super, super hot. So Interesting. there's something I'm gonna have to ask. I'm I'm, I'm close closer with Danny than I am Greg, so I'm gonna have to, or maybe I'll ask Cuba because Cube. Yeah, and, yeah, Cubes and, probably have the good good. And uh, McElroy pulse on had it. their radio show there in Birmingham. Like, I just want to know, like, do these dudes generally hate each other? Yeah, interesting. Do you have anybody that you don't like in the media? No, not really. You know me. I'm. I, I love everyone. I love working with everyone. I yeah. keep it nice and light. Keep it nice and easy. Come on, dude. I'm not give trying me to create any enemies. Uh, no, man. I'm. I'm all. I'm all Gucci. Aaron Murray, open for business. He'll go on any show. He'll talk with anybody. Um, Hell yeah. Just one guy that like genuinely gets under my skin is Dan Wolken from USA Today. I mean, the stuff that he tweets out about college football, it is it is literally appalling at some point. So I'm like, does this guy really believe what he's saying? Does he even enjoy what he's doing? Some of his takes are absolutely outrageous. I've never talked to him. I've never met him. 
Maybe he's a great guy, oh. but when it comes to his opinions on college football, he's just flat out wrong. And quite frankly, it pisses me off a lot of the time. Well, you know who I, 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 I lie there. There's one person, you know, I hate more than any, not, <laughs> you know, uh, I think I know. Paul, yeah, it'd be Mr. Feinbaum. Yeah. Yeah. Paul Feinbaum. And you know, just, like, it's a complete joke what yeah. he does. And, and I mean, good for him, man. He wrote it up and, and jumped on the Alabama train and, and took off to the, uh, when I see him all over, it's like sports center and stuff. I'm like, wh- who is this guy? They just prop him up. Dude has never put on like, doesn't even know how to put a jock strap on. I know. I know, and you never use it. I'll give you credit for it, and I and I hate to use it. If I do, I'll preface it with with an I hate doing this. But you know, when you go into the well, this guy never played. I feel like it's a lazy kind of take. If you're a former player, you're trying to um, say that this person is not credible. But there are some instances where you're like, man, you just do not have a pulse on what's going on. That's why I find to, he's just there to have hot takes. That's yeah. it. Yeah, he's just there to just say something stupid and stir the pot. Like he is no, I don't know. I think I think half the stuff that he says is complete BS. Yeah, yeah. He's I mean, just complete BS. I agree, and that that's why I'm so shocked on the Danny Cannell take because he's always about expanding the playoffs. And he's like less bowl games. I'm like, dude, you play. You know, and somebody tweeted out, maybe you want less bowl games because there's 42 of them and Florida State's not in one of them. Yeah. And that's pretty funny, right? But. I don't know. It's crazy. And I like Danny Cannell. I, I, I really do, do. I think Danny's great. He's I think really Danny good. the game. I, I like listening to him and Dusty in the morning. Yeah, I listen to them uh, too in the car. I uh, I understand the talk about, you know, some of these games don't mean as much and do the players even care. I do because you and I went to some crappy bowl games or yeah. not, not like top tier bowl games. And I had a freaking blast. Yeah. Like there's not one bowl game. Like I always say for these kids that opt out, there is not one bowl game, good or bad, that I suppose it good or bad. That I went to that I did not have a great time with my boys. Yeah. Going out, great, you know, all the events that lead up to it, the things we did, um, you know, going to certain events and then obviously playing a game. It's fun. Yeah. So I think whatever bowl game you go to, you look at it as another opportunity, go hang out with your boys in a new city, cut it up, play a football game, and then get ready for the next season. It, you're so, so right. And the last thing I'll say about that is this. Jackie and I were on the couch the other night, and the Liberty Bowl was on. And she looked over at me, and she goes, oh, my God, Liberty Bowl? Do you remember that? Do yeah. you remember how crappy the weather was in Memphis? Oh, my God, that game was so boring. You guys lost 10-6. to 6. They actually sold beer at the stadium. We ate, like, 15 pounds of barbecue. I mean, she remembered everything. It's just, like, that's what bowl games are. And it is fun and good memories. That's why you and I, I think, have such – Passionate takes about opting out when these kids can't go to the bowl games and they leave their teammates since their last game. And I like more bowls, so whatever. Maybe you and I should start our own bowl, the punt and pass bowl. How about that? Let's go. Prize picks can be – it'll be the prize picks, punt and pass bowl, and the gifts will be provided by Solomon Brothers Jewelers. I like I mean, that. That's, that's some expensive gifts. Yeah, so, oh, man. It'll be the best. It'll be the best. Oh, God. And they can use you know the promo codes, and, and everybody can have a ton of uh, – Ton of happiness around bowl season, and the girls can be. Were, were you too. were you upset? Speaking of crazy bowl games, were you upset at all with Barstool losing their game? I was kind of interested to see what it would sound. Yeah, you know, it was going to be really interesting, and it's crazy because Boise State had to back out, and uh, Portnoy, the president of Barstool Sports, came out and said, "Hey, we we had a team that was willing to come, but another bowl offered more money, and it was a business decision, and we had to cancel our bowl game." Um, and then he sent out a tweet yesterday that said, I'm at Disney World right now. There's more people here than I have seen in a crowded area in years. Meanwhile, a couple of kids are getting COVID, and whether they're sick or asymptomatic or whatever, we're not going to get into that. And bowl games are having to get canceled. Obviously, he's what pretty— about UCLA four hours before kickoff? I know. That was crazy. How do you not know the night before or two days before? That was crazy. I was really interested to see the Barstool Bowl, uh, the I Arizona was... Bowl. It was not going to be on TV. It was going to be streamed. Uh, Big Cat, and I forget who else was actually calling the game. Like, it was going to be fascinating to watch. It was going to be really interesting. It sucks for them that they had to lose that in the fashion that they did lose it. Um, and it won't be the last time. I, I think it'll be interesting to see them kind of continue to keep tabs on how they want to dive into live sports, which will be great. So, it's a yep. bummer. Again, it's a bummer those kids had to lose the game. But, man, it's crazy. It's crazy. 
All right, well, uh, let's get into these bowl games. And before we do, let's touch base with Prize Picks right now. Go to prizepicks.com, download the Prize Picks app, use the promo code PUNT. You get a 100% deposit match up to your first $100. And I'm looking at the board right now. The college football playoff games are not up yet on the board. That's okay. They will be. They're taking care of the bowl games as they come about. The Duke's Mayo Bowl is kicking off right now. Tennessee and Purdue, Mertz, Daniels tonight. I think that'll be a pretty good game also. Arizona and Wisconsin. Arizona State and Wisconsin, excuse me. But tomorrow for the bowl games, I mean, let's just say this. We don't have the numbers in front of us right now. Who would you think is going to be featured in the Georgia offense? I still want to see James Cook get his shine like he did in that Tennessee game that opened up the offense so well. Thoughts there, Murray? I think it's going to be running backs. I think they're going to look at this as, as, as two teams that want to run the football old school slug yeah. fast. Uh, so I think all running backs will have numbers. Uh, I would say Cade McNamara with his, with total passing yards. I'm yeah. interested to see what that's going to be. Um, I'd kind of, especially after Georgia got torched in the secondary, I think that's going to be a lot of eyes on can Michigan obviously not do what Alabama does. Cause they don't have those kind of guys on the outside, but kind of have some success throwing the football so can Cade get over, I don't know, like 250 passing yards? That's a that's a tall order. That's a tall order. I know it is. But, uh, I mean, maybe, what do you think they'll put it at? Like two, 225? 225, probably. Yeah. You know, I was going to ask you, we've always seen Zeus and James Cook right around like the 50 and 50, a half, 60, 42 yeah. and a half range. Um, I would love to see James go over. And I would love to see Zeus go over late in the game when they're trying to grind it out. I think Georgia's going to run at Aiden Hutchinson. That's what you see a lot of NFL teams do to those elite pass rushers. It'll be really interesting. And Stetson, what are his numbers going to be at? Will he go under because they're going to try to run the football, manage the clock, not put him in any sticky situations? You know Michigan's going to want to make Stetson Bennett beat them. So. I'm fascinated. Price fix is going to be loaded game. tomorrow. And we'll touch more on it later, but yeah. I, I, I would I would lean to more unders? offensive unders in this game. What about uh, Alabama Cincinnati? Do you think Bryce Young is going to be able to go off? No, John Mechie, yep. uh, Kobe Bryant, and Sauce Gardner are two elite DBs that Cincinnati has. You know, will they be able to mitigate Alabama's passing attack and then really put it on their offensive line and run game, which has been mediocre compared to Alabama's of years past? I mean, if, if Bryce is around 300, I would go under that 300. I think Bryce learned what he could do with his legs yeah, versus Georgia. For sure. I think that's, hey, man, you need to keep doing that kind of thing, especially if they're going to be dropping guys back to slow down the passing attack. So I would lean more under Bryce throwing with those DBs. Uh, Desmond Ritter, I think one interesting stat for him is going to be, I don't know if they're going to do running or not, but you know, 40 or 50 yards, I would kind of go over Desmond for running the football. I think Desmond is going to have to get a big game with his legs if they're going to want to have success. So I would go, I mean, I would say max 50 for Desmond running. I wouldn't go over 60 though. I think it's gonna be somewhere in the fifties for him. He'll get. I like that. I agree with you. And uh, check out our social media tomorrow at Punt and Pass. Aaron and I will put up our picks when the board goes live for the semifinal game. It's going to be an awesome day. New Year's Eve, tons of bowl games, prize picks. Go to prizepicks.com, download the app, use the promo code PUNT. You get a 100% deposit match up to your first $100. All right, let's dive into these games. Let's touch on the Rose Fiesta Sugar first quickly, and then we'll get into the semifinal games. We'll start with the Fiesta Bowl. Oklahoma State against Notre Dame. Notre Dame is a two-point favorite. The total is 45. Storylines here, Oklahoma State really messed up. They had a chance to get into the college football playoff. Laid an Mm -hmm. egg against Baylor. Came back late. We're a half a yard short. Notre Dame, Brian Kelly says peace out before they even— while they still had a chance to make the college football playoff, Marcus Freeman gets his debut as the head coach. This game is at State Farm Stadium in Glendale, Arizona. I like Notre Dame here. I'll lay the two points. I think the emotion, the player buy-in, you know, Oklahoma State a little bit of a letdown not being in the playoff. You see and you saw the excitement from the current players at Notre Dame, how they fought for Marcus Freeman to become the head coach, how when he was announced, everybody was fired up. They want to be there, and I think that matters in bowl season. So I'll lay the short number. Give me Notre Dame minus two. See, I'm going to go with Oklahoma State in this one. I just, to me... I've said all year, I don't think Notre Dame is very good, especially on offense. Um, just ugh, ugly, ugly, ugly. And I know they're going to feel great for their new head coach. I love the I love the hire. 
I think he's going to do absolutely kick ass there at Notre Dame. I just think Oklahoma State defensively is going to give Notre Dame on offense a ton of fit. So yeah. I just don't know how much Notre Dame is going to be able to score. Uh, and the good thing with with Oklahoma State too heading into this game is they're going to get their starting running back back. That was big for them heading into the to, to the Big 12 championship game. Warren did not play, so a lot of pressure was put on um, on Spencer there. Yeah. So. I think him back balances this offense a little bit. I just, like I said, I trust their offense more than I trust Notre Dame's offense going against two elite defenses. So going to be a good game, very much of a defensive struggle. Um, I'd kind of lean under for the under on this game when it comes to total points. Yeah. But I think Oklahoma State, I think Oklahoma State squeaks it out by like one to three points. All right. I like that. Uh, let's go to the Rose Bowl, the game that's considered the granddaddy of them all and the game that is causing the college football playoff games to be on New Year's Eve. Utah against Ohio State, they will also never falter away unless it is a semifinal game from a Pac-12 Big Ten matchup. Ohio State's a four-point favorite here. The total is 64. Ohio State, tons of opt-outs. No Chris Salave, no Garrett Wilson. Those are the two biggest playmakers on offense. They're also missing starting offensive linemen, starting defensive linemen. This seems like one of those situations where, look, Utah wants to be there. They got some sweet custom throwback jerseys and helmets. I don't know if you saw that, Aaron, Mm -hmm. of what they'll be wearing on Saturday. But, you know, give me the four points here. Utah wants it more than Ohio State does. There's no doubt about it. I think Kyle Whittingham, though, head coach at Utah, a great opportunity for him to get a premier win while the head coach at Utah. So I'll take the four points here. I think this is simply Utah wants to be there. Ohio State clearly doesn't. We'll see what happens. They're pretty physical too, right? Yeah, Let's not get into transitive properties, but what did Utah do against Oregon? Man, they blew them up twice. Yep. And Oregon went into Columbus when Ohio State – was having some offensive and defensive troubles early in the season and took care of business. So let's not look too much into that, but I like Utah. I, I think Utah is a very physical football team, and I'll go back to Ohio State versus Michigan, man, and kind of some issues we've seen with Ohio State on defense this year is can they play big boy football? This is a very much a finesse football team. On offense, they want to spread you out. They want to throw it. Um, kind of that mentality is, is to me, the makeup of the Ohio State Buckeye. So Utah is a team that wants to beat you up, both lines of scrimmage, dominate. Uh, if Ohio State had their receivers, yeah, the line probably wouldn't be four and a half. It'd probably be a little bit higher. So then, you know, you kind of figure out what you want to do. But without their top guys on the outside, with a defense that I don't trust against stopping the run and, and being able to be physical, and like you said to Utah wants to be there. They yeah. give a damn. I think that plays a huge part in this bowl game as well. So give me Utah. I think they actually win the game. I think so, too. I like that. We're on the same side there. Utah plus four. Sugar Bowl, the night of New Year's Day. Baylor against Ole Miss. Ole Miss is a one-point favorite. The total's 55.5. Matt Corral is playing. Yep. Um, interesting like matchup. You like, I like Baylor? Ba- I think Baylor wins the game. I, I've actually really enjoyed watching Baylor this right. year. I think they're a very good football team. I had them actually winning uh, the Big 12 championship game heading into that week. I think they play well on both sides of the football. I love their defense. Um, they do enough on offense. I think – I don't know. I wonder if their starting quarterback is back. I mean the backup came in and absolutely dominated in his role there in the Big 12 championship yeah. game. So they got depth at that position. I like both guys, whoever is going to play for the Baylor Bears. I just think they're a little bit more balanced on both sides. Uh, love their coach. Dave Miranda's done a great job this year. So give me the Baylor Bears in this one. All right. Uh, I don't mind that pick. Short number, pretty much a pick them. We'll see where it ends up before game time. Aaron's taking Baylor plus the one. He likes Dave Aranda coach defense. He likes how they played against Oklahoma State in the Big 12 championship game. I like Ole Miss here. I think Lane Kiffin, Matt Corral playing, kind of the coup de grace, send them out on the right mindset, the preparation <laughs> aspect as well for this Ole Miss offense. I know Jeff Levy, their offensive coordinator, is no longer there, but I think Lane Kiffin wants to prove that Ole Miss has still got something special going on, so I'll lay the short number, Ole Miss minus one. Uh, SEC needs to show up because they're not <laughs> looking too good so far throughout bowl season, but who cares, right? Who cares? All right, let's get into the semifinal games. We'll start with the game that kicks off at 3.30, the Cotton Bowl. Number four, Cincinnati taking on number one, Alabama. Alabama, a 13.5-point favorite. The total, 57.5. I'll just say this right now. I don't think Cincinnati's scared. 
And I think why they are not scared is because I would imagine Coach Luke Fickle is showing the tape from when they went into South Bend and beat Notre Dame this year, from when they took Georgia to the wire a year ago in the Peach Bowl. This is exactly what this program has tried hard, hard to do, prove that they belong with the big boys. The first group of five team to ever make the playoffs, the biggest game in the history of the university. There is absolutely no doubt about it. I truly do believe, and again, the college football playoff was started in 2014. If you look at the semifinal matchups dating back to 2014, there's a good chance that one of the semifinal games will be a blowout. I believe one way or another that Georgia Michigan has a better chance to be a blowout than Alabama Cincinnati does. I think this game will be close. I'll be interested to see if it goes up towards two touchdowns by kickoff tomorrow, Aaron. I will take Cincinnati plus 13 and a half. And I think it's because John Mechie's out. I really like Cincinnati's DBs being able to neutralize Alabama's passing attack. And I just don't think Cincinnati is scared of trying to force Alabama to run against them. Call me naive. I know Alabama and Nick Saban, with this amount of preparation in these semifinal games, dominate. I just think it's within two touchdowns, so I'll take the points. See, I I like Alabama in this game. One, for the preparation. There's no one better when given more time to get ready for a game than Nick Saban and Alabama to to, to go out there and dominate. So I love that aspect of it. And listen, Alabama's been hot and cold all year. We know it. Miami, they look great. Florida looked like crap. AM they lost. They looked great for uh, Mississippi State. They looked great for Ole Miss, but then they went to crap for LSU and Auburn and then dominated versus Georgia. So, like, if the team that faced Miami, Mississippi State, Ole Miss, and Georgia shows up, they'll whack Cincinnati. They'll beat them by maybe 20 points. Yeah. It's just, I don't know if that team's going to show up or not. Like, it's, it's such a question. It's a, it's a flip of a coin. What Alabama team are we going to get? Because if that team shows up that faced Georgia, they're the best team in the country or one of the best. I still think Georgia's right there with them. But if not, then, yes, yeah, Cincinnati may find a way to make this thing close, and who knows what happens. I'm anticipating with this much time off, with Nick Saban, with experience of playing in a big-time game like this, that Alabama is going to come out and give us a performance similar to what they did against Georgia, similar to what they did for Miami. I think they win by 14 to 20 points. Listen, this is Cincinnati's first time here. This is a big moment. Butts are going to be tight. Yeah. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of anxiety. There's going to be guys not sleeping tonight. Alabama's going to sleep like babies. They've been there. They've done that. They, they won the okay. Natty last year, for goodness okay. sake. Yeah, they the did. The lights are not too bright. So Cincinnati has to face two things. One, facing the fact that they've never been in a game like this. And you know it. These guys, it's in their mind, man. We're on national TV. We're in the playoffs. Guys get tight. You play a little bit different. And then two, you're going to look across the field and see Nick Saban. Alabama is completely different than Notre Dame. This is Alabama. They have run college football for the past 15 years. There is an anxiety when you look across the field and see the Crimson Tide. I think those two, the mental side of the game, is going to give Alabama a huge advantage in this one. They ain't scared. Since he ain't scared. I'll just tell you that right now. I think when you talk about a fan base that's going to be absolutely fired up and the one team that could shut them the hell up in the first 10 minutes is Alabama. We're going to find out how this game goes in the first 10 minutes. Would you agree with that? Yes. Okay. I agree. All yeah. Right. All right. We're on separate sides there. Aaron likes Bama laying 13 and a half. I like Cincinnati. And I'm always the first to say you don't make money fading Alabama. But I'm expecting a great game. What could be a better game, though? The Orange Bowl. Number two, Michigan. Number three, Georgia in South Beach. Aaron Murray will be there, boots on the ground. 7.30 p.m., probably closer to 8 on ESPN. This is where game day is going to be. This is the Fowler-Herb Street game. Our buddy Sean McDonough and Todd Blackledge will be calling the Cotton Bowl. A lot of hype. Jim Harbaugh versus Kirby Smart. Aiden Hutchinson, Heisman Trophy finalist. Jordan Davis, N'Kobe Dean, National Award winners on the Georgia defense. These two programs coming into this game, Aaron, could not be really different for the last four weeks. Michigan finally beats Ohio State and gets that big monkey off their back. They win the Big Ten Championship in dominant fashion against a much lesser opponent. 
that being Iowa. Georgia, undefeated in the regular season, ranked above and favored over Alabama for the first time in five years. Alabama was an underdog going into the SEC championship game. And Georgia's defense laid an absolute egg. Alabama ran it up, took care of business in a major way. Georgia backs into the college football playoff. And when we were opening the show, we were talking about just the general sentiment around the fan bases. Clearly, Michigan is happy to get out of the cold. Clearly, Michigan fans are thrilled that they're in the playoff. Georgia fans on the other side, maybe going in with one eye closed, maybe going in with one eye open and saying, Are we in for another letdown? I don't know. I think it's a great matchup. Uh, Strength versus strength, which is obviously Georgia's defense against Michigan's rushing attack. Where to begin? Georgia's a seven and a half point favorite. Aaron, the total's forty five and a half. A lot to break down here. Woo! That 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 the hanger there, that half point's really throwing me for a loop right now because I think this is going to be a. I do believe what you said. This does have a chance. I, I think the Cincinnati Alabama game has more of a chance, but I do think there is a chance that Georgia could beat them by double digits. Um, I, I think it's going to be tough for Michigan to score. I just think it's going to be tough for Georgia to score. I do. I just think it is going to be tough for Georgia to move the ball up and down the field against this Michigan defense. I really like what they have. I think this is going to be an old school slug it out, run the football, field position, field position, special teams type game. Like I could see it being like. I don't know, 17 to 13, 20 wow. to 14, super low scoring. Uh, I think Georgia wins it. I think Georgia's better. I think both teams are identical. Uh, I think they're, they're, they're similar in the way they're made. I think they're they both coached extremely well. I think Georgia's just maybe a tad bit more athletic. I think their defense is a tad bit better than what we, not a tad, but I think they're better. I think their defense is better than Michigan's. Yeah, of course. I just don't, I don't trust Georgia's offense still. Yeah. I think Georgia's offense is still, Running the ball is 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 good. I think the receivers are average to good. Obviously, I love Bowers. I just don't think our offense is is explosive. And Michigan defense is is a top five, top ten defense in the country. How do you combat Aiden Hutchinson and that Michigan pass rush? Because obviously, Michigan is going to go in and say, hey, we need to stop the run and put this on Stetson Bennett, get them into clear passing situations, and allow Aiden Hutchinson to absolutely get after the quarterback. Do you run straight at the edges? Do you feature James Cook like he was featured in that Tennessee game? How do you neutralize somebody like Aiden Hutchinson, who I would compare to, albeit he's in the inside in the NFL, an Aaron Donald type dominant defensive lineman where you're like, man, what are we going to do? We cannot let this guy get hot. You have to, you have to, I think you run at him. I think you do some zone reads where Stetson's reading him too to put him in a bind of, hey, does he want to come down on the running back? Does he want to sit back? And, and, and deal with Stetson running the football. So put him in those situations where he has to make a decision. Obviously, use your tight ends to chip him. I wouldn't live in the world of having the chip because all these fans always talk about, oh, just keep a tight end there, keep a tight end, chip him, have a back chip. That's great and all, and, 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 and you have to use it in, in certain spots. But the issue with chipping is you don't get that receiver out and route. So the timing yeah. of the structure of the play gets thrown off. And that makes it really tough for a quarterback to make a decision. It makes it really easy for defenders to drop back in the coverage, knowing that, hey, man, there's chip responsibility. It's going to take him a second or two to get out. We really don't have to focus on that guy right now. Mm-hmm. So that that's the issue with always having the chip. So you have to be, like I said, I think run at him. you got to get in third and manageable where the ball can come out got quick. To. Yeah, where he can get frustrated. So I think those are ways to obviously neutralize him. Uh, he's a good player. He's really, really good. High he's motor. Not, he's not – Will Anderson, no. No. He's nowhere near where – he's good. He's not a game record in the sense of what Will Anderson can do. So I thought Georgia did a good job against him. I think they'll be able to handle Hutchinson just well. Uh, it, 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 to me, once again, it goes down to our receivers. Can our receivers create some separation? Can Stetson hit them down the field for explosive plays? The team with the most explosive plays – will win this ball game. All right. I, I look, you get into situational football, you're, you're you're speaking my language. I totally agree. Explosive plays, turnovers, third down. This is one of those games and that those are the types of games which Georgia dominated all season long. Arthur Roach, who's a who's a great listener of the pod, Aaron, at Arthur Roach ATL, he tweeted in this morning and he compared Michigan to one of your favorite teams, Aaron. Here's what he said. Michigan reminds me so much of Kentucky 
I think Kentucky is better coached, and Michigan has some more talent sprinkled throughout the roster. But overall, similar stats and strengths. Hope Georgia can replicate the 30-13 to score tomorrow. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, I thought that was pretty interesting. I think Michigan has more skill. Um, I, I'm a big fan of this Michigan team. I, I, I really enjoy it. I think this is a team that should be undefeated. They completely dropped the ball oh, there against Michigan State in the second half. I mean, Yikes. they were crushing them. I think they just went to bed. They, they just took the pressure off, went to sleep, thought the game was in hand, and Michigan State came back and won it. They, they should have won. They were the better football team. Um, you know, what they did versus Ohio State, what they did in the Big 12, or excuse me, Big 10 championship game, they're hot, man. And there's something to be said with playing a team with confidence. They're, they're better than Kentucky, they have better talent. Um, I, I do like Cade McNamara. I think he's actually pretty talented. I think their backs are really, really good. I'd give obviously the edge to, to Michigan when it comes to physicality up front with the offense line and running backs. So yeah, I mean, similar makeup to Kentucky with what they want to do, but I just think better. They're a better version. I think Georgia's a better version than Michigan, but I think the gap between Georgia and Michigan is closer than say Michigan versus Kentucky, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, and you spoke about the receivers as well. Arthur Roche backed it up and said, uh, listen to all my favorite podcasts, he adds punt and pass. Shout out to Arthur. And he said, can't help but notice the lack of mentions for Jermaine Burton. Would hope he benefits from recovery time and is he ready to show out. He hasn't done anything all year. I know, he hasn't. He hasn't done anything. How about this, though? Governor Millage tweets at us. You were mentioned in Pat Forty's Sports Illustrated article talking about how efficient Stetson Bennett has been all year. Here's what Pat Forty wrote. Munkin, Todd Munkin, the offense coordinator of Georgia, has seen Stetson Bennett put himself on track to become Georgia's single-season pass efficiency leader, even with the poor performance against Alabama. Bennett's current efficiency rating is 176.85, a smidge better than the school record of 174.82 set by Aaron Murray back in 2012. He's also just ahead of Murray's career efficiency mark, but Benton figures, Bennett figures to have another season in a Georgia uniform at 22, so that remains to be seen. All right. So, I mean, Governor Millage, thanks for the shout-out to Aaron Murray there and, and helping us understand what Pat Forty was writing about. But, look, people bash Stetson. The quarterback talking point is just beaten to death by Georgia fans. Oh, enough Stetson already. Starting... You think these coaches are going to put him out there because they want to lose a football game? And, and you know, Man. Todd Munkin said in his press release, presser, he goes, guys, watch the tape. Yes. We can win a national championship with Stetson Bennett. The defense has to I play. Know. The defense, yes. this is a team, and I know people aren't used to it because of the way offenses has, have evolved and the offenses have won national championships. This is not a team that's going to win a championship because of the offense. Yep. They're going to win a championship because of the defense. I agree. Co when it comes to coaching, uh, Kirby Smart versus Jim Harbaugh, what are your thoughts there? I think that's a fascinating matchup. I, think that one is. Way or I, was, on, I was on Big Ten this morning uh, on Sirius, and they asked me that question too. I was like, man, I think Kirby obviously has gotten better when it comes to decision-making. Harbaugh obviously has experience in the NFL. I think he's done a good job this year. I mean, both crazy different Competitive, hyper-competitive hyper -competitive guys, yeah. Former players. Um, I love the coaching battle. I think they're about, I would, I would, I would say if I had to say, you know, off, if let's compare all three phases real quick okay, okay. and coaches. So I'd give coaches in, in draw. I think both coaches are about on the same, same level right now when it comes to head coaches and coaching staff. Um, I would maybe give, I'd maybe give Michigan a slighter edge on offense because I think they're a little bit more effective running the football with that offensive line. I think that's back. fair. I think that's fair. I think Georgia obviously better defense, and I would say Georgia better special teams. Yeah, you know, Michigan's kicker did win the Lou Groza Award this year, so he was the top kicker in the nation. Obviously, if it comes down to that, uh, Jack Podlesny played better and kicked better yes. down the stretch. Uh, in those big kick-type situations, he was never really put in those situations all season long. Uh, Punting-wise, Jake Camarda is clearly better than Michigan's punter, who also is very good. Camarda is just that talented, though. Uh, and then it comes down to coaching. You know, And if this game is close, if there is a situational football moment at the end of the first half. Maybe the opportunity for Georgia to put some points on the board. If they defer, they get the ball after halftime. That could be huge. And then the last four minutes of the game. Yep. What are you going to do? You cannot mess it up. You better have your timeouts. If you're in a defensive battle, you better have your timeouts if you're trying to get down into field goal range to set up a possible game-winning kick. 
Um, that would be fa- if it is an if it is another nail biter semifinal game for Georgia like it was in the Rose Bowl a couple years ago. Uh, that'd be awesome. That certainly would be awesome. It's gonna be a great game. It's gonna be a great game, and I guess it's time for us to to make our picks. If you, wow, South Carolina just scored again, fourteen nothing. South Carolina, two bomb plays too. Nice. I'm on the under, so I hope this slows down a little bit. Um, um I'll go first. I'll give you a yeah, break. Please. I'm going, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go Michigan with the points. Okay. I guess I think Georgia wins like 2014. I know there's some. I I, I did a score prediction earlier in the week for um, some UGA. I forgot who it was for. I said the game was gonna be like 27-17. The more I go back and watch it. And think about it, and I know we're a day out, so I'm a little bit more clear now with it. I think it's going to be a lot more of a defensive struggle. Like I said, Georgia's just they're, – they're, they're the better version of Michigan, but still Michigan's a damn good team, man. I think they could keep it close. So 20, 2014, 17, 13, something like that. I, see, I think this game just plays into Georgia's hands perfectly. I, I really do. And I also love the fact that you know – that this entire coaching staff and Kirby Smart specifically has been crushing this football team, essentially saying, yeah, we still have everything that we want to accomplish right in front of us, but they have been humbled in a big, big way, Aaron, after that Alabama loss. I I think this team got refocused. I think they understand that the challenge that awaits them with Michigan is much like a lot of the games that they played earlier this year, and they dominated I do not foresee Michigan being able to find that much production on the offensive side of the ball. I think Georgia's defense takes this game very personally, especially after how they played against Alabama. And I think Georgia's offense relies on the run game to where you get into third manageable, to where you don't have to turn the ball over or be in those situations where everybody knows you're going to throw it. Michigan can tee off with some pass rush and put Stetson into some precarious situations. I like Georgia. I like Georgia by 10 points. I like Georgia by 10 points, 31. I hope so. Twenty seven seventeen. I'm gonna live afterwards. And, go to uh, yeah. I'm going to live afterwards to go celebrate. I'm laying the seven and a half. I think Georgia wins by ten or more. Twenty seven seventeen. Thirty four seventeen. That's what I think. I think this is exactly what you've seen Georgia do all season long, and Georgia will be primed for a national championship showdown. Speaking of the national championship, Aaron, before we get out of here. So, to recap, Aaron likes Georgia to win a close one, but it'll take the 7.5 points with Michigan, and I think Georgia wins by 10+. plus. So, I will lay the 7.5 in the Orange Bowl, which it sounds like we're both expecting a Georgia-Alabama rematch in the national championship in Indianapolis. Bet Online though, has some futures up for national championship matchups. Georgia would be a 1.5-point dog against Alabama. Alabama would be a six-point favorite against Michigan. Georgia would be a 13-and-a-half-point favorite against Cincinnati. And Michigan would be a seven-point favorite against Cincinnati. Just something to think about. I like it. Um, And then while we were taping this podcast and we discussed Danny Cannell's hatred on bowl games, Dennis Dodd from CBS, he says, My God, we've reached the point where hyping a condiment being poured on an adult male Passes for programming, poking fun at the Duke's Mayo Bowl. When we have the discussion about bowl relevance, I'll start right here. Dude, Dennis Dot. Damn, Dot. It's the Duke's just, Mayo Bowl. Change yeah, the dump in your pants. Have some, fun, have some fun with it, man. This is a bowl season. It's 1130 it's on a Thursday, and we're watching college football. Yeah, what else are you going to be doing on a Thursday before New Year's? Nothing. Sit back, relax, and enjoy I do think the losing coach should get dumped. That's my one opinion. About Did you the see thing. the quotes from Beamer and, and Mac Brown? Uh, I think I heard them. Possibly. So they asked Beamer, you know, if you win, you're going to get dumped with Mayo. What are your thoughts? He's like, well, I actually hate Mayo, but if it means we win, then who cares? And Mac Brown said, you could hit me in the face with a frying pan as long as we win a football <laughs> game. I was like, I love it. It's fun, right? We're having yeah, fun. man. All right, we're having fun. All right, buddy. Well, have fun down in Miami. Have fun at live slash live. Live, um, baby. <laughs> Catch me at live. Follow us on social media at Punt and Pass, at Drew Butler, at Aaron Murray, puntandpass.com. Head on over to Prize Picks. Download the Prize Picks app. Use the promo code PUNT. You get a 100% deposit match up to your first $100, prizepicks.com. Murray. 
We'll talk to everybody on Monday. Happy New Year's, everybody. Happy New Let's Year. go. Happy Have New Year's. Have fun down there. Be responsible. Be safe. And uh, we will talk to you on Monday. See you.